Hi and welcome back to the channel. I want to do something uh, a little different today. I want to talk about a couple of kits that I've not actually started yet, but I want to explain um, kind of why I've bought them and why uh, they mean something to me. Um, you may have seen from the, the video title, I've called it, you know, kind of first steam locomotives. Um, and that's a very good reason. So let's start with the, the first kit, which is in this box. Um, no, no instructions uh, printed out when I bought it. Um, but it's a, a high-level kit um, kit uh, for a Hudswell Clark loco. Um, you can kind of see through. Well, maybe you can see through here. Hudswell Clark 040 saddle tank. Um, lots of nice etches, uh, motor, some nice uh, castings, etc. Don't have the wheels for this yet. I still need to order the wheels. But other than that, it comes as a as a complete kit. Um, now the reason I want to to build this was that this is probably well it represents probably the first steam locomotive I ever saw. Um, so I grew up just outside Leeds. Um, obviously, those of you all know um, lots and lots of steam locos built in Leeds. Obviously, um, well before I was born. Um, but the Middleton Railway runs from quite close to the centre of Leeds, really, out towards Middleton, um, which is on the kind of south side of Leeds, uh, where I near where I grew up, um, and we would make uh, trips to to the railway. Um, and you're not going to be able to see this, but there's a this is a slide uh, my dad took, and uh, what you can see on is it says Middleton Railway, sixteenth uh, of the fourth eighty three. So I would have been um, three and a half ish uh, when that photo was taken. Uh, and I can show you what the photo looks like because I had this printed out on my wall uh, for the entire time I was growing up, um, and it still sits on the side uh, in my in my study now. Um, so this is this is the loco um, Henry De Lacy two. Um, it was Hudswell Clark Works number one three oh nine, built in nineteen seventeen. Uh, worked its entire working life at the Kirkstall Forge. Um, engineering which again is not far from uh, both where it was built and the Middleton Railway um, when the works the forge closed it was kind of given I think to Middleton Railway and pulled the first passenger train apparently at the railway in July of 1969 um, by the time this photo was took in 83 um, you can see it was obviously looking a tad a tad worse for wear um, and in fact, it wasn't until a long time after I'd had this photo on my wall for quite a while, I realised that um, it probably was out of use by the time this photo was taken. You can see that there's something across the top of the chimney. Um, looks like a piece of board, I assume, to stop birds or water or whatever getting into the, into the chimney. Um, and I think it was looking at the background. Um, I think it was parked out in part of what's now the part of the car park. Uh, at the Middleton Railway, but probably where the new it was where the new engine shed is because it didn't use. To, I remember when I first went, I'm fairly certain there was like a port cabin for the shop and the ticket office, whereas now there's the big um, the big engine shed and cafe and things. And I think this was parked in the in the car park when you entered. Um, so yeah, so I think this was this was probably the first the first steam train I saw, even if it wasn't actually in steam. And as I say, I've had this photo up on my wall uh, a long time. In fact, you can see it's been damaged. Um, this little mark here actually comes from um, the fact that in my in my bedroom growing up I had a um, piece of chipboard down the back of the wardrobe that had a, a, a an OO gauge layout pinned to it. There was no scenery or anything, it was just plain track on the chipboard um, so that it would fit behind the wardrobe and I would you could slide it out and then lay it on the bed. Um, and this is a mark from hitting the photo with the, the corner of the chipboard while trying to put it back. Um, so yeah, so that's a that's a that's a kit that I will be building at some point, um, and I'm assuming it sure will will fe feature on the channel. Um, I'll put some links up to the um, to the kit on the high level uh, page. Uh, probably put up a, a link to the photo as well. Um, just here, hopefully, if I put this here, you'll be able to kind of compare the compare the two briefly. Um, and as I say, colour wise, um, the, even the liveries uh, very very similar, but I'm not quite sure it's an exact match. But it's going to be close enough. Uh, that I will probably, um, if I can summon up the courage to do the lining, I will um, paint it exactly as as this photo. Um, yeah, not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet, uh, but that's the that's the that's that loco. Anyway, that's the first one. Um, so moving on, the second the second kit I've got 
um, is is this. So this is a uh, golden arrow kit for the uh, Wells Pool and Landfair Light Railways um, Bayer Peacock locomotives, specifically either the Earl or, or the Countess. Um, the kit allows you to build it in multiple um, in multiple versions depending on uh, what time period you're trying to model. Um, obviously this is a, a narrow gauge loco whereas the, the, the Hudswell Clark was a, as a standard gauge model. Um, I want to build this as the Earl was the first steam locomotive I drove. Um, I have had a, a couple of um, small uh, driver experiences, you know, five, ten minutes um, shunting, shuttling up and down a, um, a, a station um, on a couple of other locos since but um, I spent the entire I spent an entire afternoon in June of 2011 I think it was um, doing a driver experience it was paid for as a, a birthday present where um, under a lot of supervision um, I drove the Earl the full return journey along the railway and it was an absolutely fantastic afternoon and I've always wanted um, a model of the of the locomotive so I picked this one up as a, as a second hand uh, one it had been started most of the um, so some bits have been cut out uh, but most of it when I gave it a shake um, the glue that had been used it just fell apart and I can carry on taking this apart um, as far as I'm aware it's complete except for it needs uh, wheels uh, gearbox um, motor. Um, I have a plan for that. Um, unfortunately, the I want to use a high-level gearbox, which is currently out of stock. Um, so again, this one will this one will wait. But um, all the parts appear to be appear to be here. I'm going to change slightly the plan from using the cranks that are supplied. They're they're um, they're a bit over oversized, I think. Uh, looking at drawings of the loco, so I'm probably going to use the. Uh, mosquito narrow gauge um, wheels and cranks which should again make make life easier um, so yeah so that's a it's another another loco that has obviously the model will have a will have some meaning to me when it's finished um, so yeah I don't know quite when they'll um, appear on the channel um, I'll, I'll put a photo up here so you can see what they uh, look like um, I'm not quite sure when they'll appear on the channel um, as I say I've got to collect all the rest of the parts together the Hudson Clark needs wheels. Um, this needs wheels, gearbox, motor. Um, <clears throat> so it's not going to be any time soon. I've got plenty of other part finished, unstarted kits kicking around that have everything, everything together. Uh, but I thought it'd be interesting to kind of give you a, a glimpse of things that that will appear one day um, and the reason, the reason behind them. Uh, it's nice to show some old photos as well uh, on occasions. So thanks for that.